Ooh, it is a nasty day out today, y'all. Ugh, starting to get cabin fever already, and it's just early morning already. Yuck. But I do have something. I got something to keep me occupied, and I can't wait to show y'all. <laughs> Need to get me a windshield for the side by side. <laughs> it all right, Holly. Whew. It's much better than our grower solution greenhouse, I can tell you that. It's not that it's super cold today. Uh, it's just the sun's not out, and it's just constant rain. Blah, blah. This is our rainy season, and the good thing is, is that our pond is starting to work itself on out. You know what I mean? But I do have something exciting. I really do. Uh, it's just uh, this is one of my favorite times of year. You guys know I love gardening, and it's the time. It's it's time for us to start seeds it really is and i know we got a huge following that's gardeners or beginner gardeners and they look to us for it, advice and tips and love watching it and so it's that time it really is and plus what else we're going to do on this nasty rainy day right so it's just perfect per perfect it's the perfect time for us to start our seeds this year and this will be for the vegetable garden. This won't be for the flowers. The flowers, I'll start uh, a little later and I'll let you guys know what we're growing in that. But right now we're gonna start our vegetable garden for our huge kitchen garden, or it's gonna be a market garden. Uh, Cause you guys know now we have the, uh, the little veggie stand or the farm stand that we can utilize if we need to. Uh, it's not like that we're going to sell. Everything we're growing is for sale. Everything we're growing is for us. But if we got any extras that we don't give away to friends and family, we have a, uh, a way to uh, make a little money off of it and, and offer it to the community around here in our area. So today is seed starting day for us. And I'll let you guys know exactly what we're going to grow this year here on our farm. And also what we're starting in seeds, seed trays today, and what we're not going to start in seed trays a little bit later that will direct seed or we'll start in seed trays later down the road because uh, there's some stuff to just shoot up real fast and you don't want that overtaking your area so you can wait a little bit longer on those guys and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. I love it. This is, this is, this is my thing. Speaking of stoked, y'all look at this. Do y'all remember the, 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 the fruit tree cuttings that the Texas boys sent me? And I'm going to get into a couple more here, but everything is looking, I say everything. Um, some of my figs are not going to make it. I can tell you that by looking at some of them. But for the most part, for the most part, the mulberries are doing wonderful. That's what you're seeing here. These are the mulberry trees. I mean, they're just doing awesome, except this one right here that, oh, there's green on it. Never mind. So they're doing amazing. Mulberries are doing amazing. The white peaches are doing great. I can see I got, they're still green. Um, I'm worried about this fig cutting. I've been scraping them, just checking the fig cuttings from time to time. So today is seed starting day for us. And I'll let you guys know exactly what we're gonna grow this year here on our farm. And also what we're starting in seeds, seed trays today and what we're not going to start in seed trays a little bit later that will direct seed or we'll start in seed trays later down the road because uh, there's some stuff to just shoot up real fast and you don't want that overtaking your area so you can wait a little bit longer on those guys and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked I love it this is this is this is my thing speaking of stoked y'all look at this do y'all remember the the the, the fruit tree cuttings that the Texas boys sent me. And I'm gonna get into a couple more here, but 
everything is looking, I say everything. Um, some of my figs are not gonna make it. I can tell you that by looking at some of them. But for the most part, for the most part, the mulberries are doing wonderful. That's what you're seeing here. These are the mulberry trees. I mean, they're just doing awesome, except this one right here that, oh, there's green on it. Never mind. So they're doing amazing. Mulberries are doing amazing. The white peaches are doing great. I can see I got, they're still green. Um, I'm worried about this fig cutting. I've been scraping them, just checking the fig cuttings from time to time. So we'll just have to keep watching them for sure. But also, I had a viewer send me some apricots. And look at there, that one's got a bloom on it. So it's doing well. It really is. So I've never done apricots. I've never done peaches. I've never done mulberries. I've always done figs and had good success with figs. But mulberries must be super easy. And the uh, I mean, I'm impressed about the stone fruit. I really am. Hey, Holly. What are you doing, girl? <laughs> I got my greenhouse help in here with me today. I love a good seed start mix. I really, really do. And there's some people that will disagree with me on this, but most will agree with me, is that you want a good seed start mix. You don't want pot and soil. You don't want your native soil. Uh, you want a seed starting mix. You see right here, this house one, premium seed starting mix. It's sterile, so it's gonna help with any type of disease that you get when you start seeds. And the thing about the house one is, it's got all kinds of good stuff in it. Uh, I, I've made my own, or I have made my own, and I probably will make some this year. And I'll show you guys how to do that, but gosh, this stuff here is so daggum good. It's, it's like the Cadillac of seed starting mix, I will tell you that. <laughs> But what I like to do with my seed start mix is, once I get it, I like using this tub. And I wet it. I wanna get this stuff soaked because that peat, a lot of times, will be so dry and peat, peat moss, whatever type of peat it is, it's going to repel water at first and then when it does start soaking it up it soaks it up so it takes a lot of water at first and in my opinion it's just a lot easier and better to soak it before i put it in them seed trays because if not i'm going to be sitting there watering them seed trays and if i'd already put my seeds in there's a chance they'll float up or float to the next cell or float out or move around and you'll have a seed start that's up against the side of your of your seed cell. So just my opinion and my experience is it's just way better to go ahead and pre-soak your seed start mix. And you just want it good and moist. We don't want standing water in here. And if you don't like getting your hands dirty, then put you some gloves on. And there's a tip. I used to follow a guy that really got me in the garden. This was many, many years ago. This is way before YouTube. And it's right when the Home and Garden Network first came out. And it was a garden show called Paul James the Garden Guy. And I loved that show. I loved it. He's one of the main inspirations that I love gardening today. He really is. Um, just love that show. But um, he used to have a tip that I've never tried before when it when you talk about uh, doing stuff like this. And a lot of people don't want to get the dirt under their fingernails. And the tip he said to do is, he said, take a bar of soap and run your fingernails under it and do whatever you want to do. And the, and the uh, dirt won't get under there. I don't know why that's always stuck with me, but it has. I used to love that show. Paul James, the garden guy. Loved that show. He was so awesome. He was real quirky and funny, and he reminded me, even the way he looked, his stature, the way he, he presented himself, and the corny dad jokes he had. He reminded me of one of my good friend's own dads growing up. And um, so I had that he had that feel to me too and 
Um, just uh, love that show. Love that show. Just seemed like a really nice guy. All right. Got my seeds starting to mix ready. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fill my trays up. So what I like to do is, is I like to take me a seed tray bottom, like this one right here. And I'm gonna set this in here like so. So now, when I'm spreading this mix out in here, whatever falls out on the side, I save. See that? I get to save it and I won't waste it or lose it. Then I'm gonna pack it down a little bit here. Make sure we didn't get any big air gaps or anything. And we're looking good, looking good. Now, I'm a seed tray guy. I just am. Now I have tried the sole blocking with where you make your own you know, you take this moisture, um, you take this moist seed starting mix and put it in this contraption and it makes called soil blocks and you don't have the seed trays. And it's just my personal preference. I don't, I don't, I don't like it. it I just, I just don't. I know people love it. I know people absolutely love doing soil blocking. Do, and I, and there's nothing wrong with it. Me personally, I'm a seed tray guy. I don't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff. And, you know, you can get these seed trays from Hoss. You can get these seed trays from Grower Solutions. Uh, you can just use them over and over and over and over again. You see the holly? Hmm. You see that? Hmm. So to give you guys an idea, this is the big bag. This is the 16 ounce bag of seed start mix. That did 498 cell seed trays, which is basically 400 seeds. So the eight quart would be 200 seeds. So that kind of gives you an idea. I don't know how big of a garden you're planting. 400 seeds is, is, is a lot, I know. We do plan on having a big, big garden this year. And that was one reason that we moved to a bigger farm so we could grow more stuff because we were so limited to our smaller garden at our other farm. I'll have some extra plants, I know that. And then I got my mom, she got her first green stalk this year. And so I'm gonna have her some plants ready to put in her green stalk. And I'll have some friends too that I'll give some, some starts to. And we'll just plant the rest of them. Or I could pot them up, put them in the farm stand and sell um, potted seed starts or potted tomato plants on the side of the road too if I wanted to. All right, so let me show you what we're officially growing here in our big, large kitchen market garden. And this won't be all of it. This will just be some stuff that we're starting today in seed trays. And as things that I'll direct seed in the ground, I'll let you guys know and we'll do a video on that. And then if I start things in seed trays later, I'll let you guys know we'll do a video on that as well. So this is mainly, this is gonna be our spring and summer garden and right off the bat i'm gonna let you know about the tomatoes we're growing this year of course we're gonna do sun goals you gotta always do sun goals this is our cherry tomato we love this tomato best tasting tomato there is in my opinion you can eat these right off the vine they're absolutely delicious this is i got two favorites and this is one of those two the red snapper another amazing tomato this is one of those hybrids one of these new hybrids that has the heirloom flavor, but has the hybrid disease resistance. This thing is super disease resistant. I love this tomato. Now this tomato here, now these are all determinants too, except the sun goat, it's the indeterminate. And if you don't know the difference is, is the indeterminate is gonna grow all season long and produce all season long. Determinate tomatoes, well, all, almost, it won't, it won't be, you know, perfect, but they'll produce a bunch at one time. So you're determined to know that you're getting your tomatoes at one time. That's how I always remember it. So that's a determinant. So red snapper is a determinant. This is a big slicer, big, big slicer. May not be quite as big as a beefsteak size, 
but it gets up there and this is a big vigorous plant this is a new one that i'm growing this year and this is hoss's tomato this is the hossinator uh, i'm excited to try this one again this is a big big slicer this one's probably bigger than the red snapper never grown this one before but this is supposed to be an awesome tomato and hoss has got their name on it i know it's pretty darn good now one of my old staples this is one of our favorites that is the bellarosa this is a great slicer you can can this one it's not going to get near as big as the other two it's your just medium sized tomato now here's one that's new for some reason it caught my eye for whatever reason i don't know why i was looking at the hoss catalog online and it's called a southern ripe tomato never grown this one before it had a great write-up on it it's supposed to be flavorful it's supposed to be produced like crazy so this is a new one for me this year so i got two new ones the hallucinator and the southern ripe when you start getting older you start getting wiser <laughs> every year i do seed trays and i stand over this thing and i start putting them in here and after about 10 minutes my back starts hurting so this year i got his chairs <laughs> that was pretty pretty bright and guess what what i'm not lacking in the older and wiser either why i brought me you some brought your readers because <laughs> i knew that if these seeds are tiny oh they are tiny. then i may have a hard time they are tiny being now, able to see each one of these holds 98 seeds and i want to start on this one Okay. and work our way down these are my extras okay we may or may not use those so i'm just supervising huh yeah got, my tray down here in got the your tray down there <laughs> so these are 50 seeds each okay we're not growing 50 sun goals that would be the oh man that would be Why not? crazy because there's we couldn't hire enough people to pick them <laughs> they're awesome though they are awesome that's sun go sun go tomato listen if you if you want to grow a tomato and you want to make sure you're going to get one and it is a cherry uh that produces like crazy you don't have to do anything to it that's super delicious it's the sun gold it is the best tasting tomato there is there's been tests on that it always comes out usually on top or in the top three it's just an excellent tomato and anybody that grows them loves them this tomato really changed changed everything for me when i first tasted it it really did you want to put those in there? I do. I would say two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Ah, yeah, let's do two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Let's just do those first two rows. If you want to do three, that's fine. Okay. That's one, two, three. That's twenty-one. Okay, that'd be good. So, do we, when we plant tomato seeds, yeah. do we make a little indention? I already done it. We got a little press spot. Okay, so you're going to come back and cover it up. I'm going to come back and cover so it up. So all I have to do is distribute the seed? That's all you have to do. Oh, my goodness. You got it made. I'm not even earning my pay. <laughs> wow, they're tiny. Yeah, those are tiny. That's why I like pelleted seeds so much better. If you don't know what a pelleted seed is, I'll show you here in just a minute when we get to uh, when we get to the, uh, the pelleted ones, the pelleted tomato seeds and all it is is clay it's a clay coating on the seed to make the seed much larger and then once you plant it that clay breaks down and then the seed germinates yeah. and this this is not going to be all probably i don't know it just depends we're working on the potager garden the kitchen garden behind the house um i'm gonna grow a lot of tomatoes there but i'm gonna kind of do an heirloom tomato garden back there's my plan we do struggle with heirloom tomatoes in our area because of our high heat and our extremely high humidity here um, our dew points stay in the, the high 70s here and it is so humid and it, it just a lot of diseases come about and so we really do struggle with heirlooms that's why i love hybrids so much but i'm just i've gotten where I, i'm learning about tomato history there's a book that i've been listening to and i just i just got really interested in it and i would love to grow some of these old old varieties that our grandparents and our great grandparents grew it's a little oh, bit bigger I'm accidentally dropping it's fine if you get more one in there if you get more one in there it's okay um i'm trying just, my best to not, just pull but... the weakest one out once they start germinating well, it's warm in this greenhouse though isn't it yeah it feels good we got some cold nights coming i'll probably cut the heater on on those nights 
but uh, and I but got that's a little okay. heat mats too. If we don't start now, we'll miss part of the yeah, growing yeah, 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 season. Yeah, 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 that's right. And I got the heat mats going, so we're good there. But a lot of times the heat mats can't keep up if it gets super cold. Right. Only one that I'm really concerned about are peppers, and we'll get into that in just a minute. Okay, I'm done. Done with those. All right, let's just finish that out in red snappers. Okay, got me a tag. I'm hoping that we can freeze dry tomatoes. You know what I saw that I have never even thought about doing? What's that? Air frying tomatoes. Ooh. And what they did was they took a little small grape type tomato, yeah. like the sun gold, yeah. our little cherry tomato, and they put it in the air fryer and it came out phenomenal. Really? So I can't wait to give that a try because I think it's going to be like our vegetable that's a candy. You know, we could air fry green, fry green tomatoes. We could do all sorts of things. I like having you in here. Are you? Usually I'm the one that doing all it by myself. Well, as long as I got these glasses on us. Well, I say that Mary Carl a lot of times helps too. Yeah. Now this is the Bella Rosa. This is an awesome tomato. And again, the Bella Rosa is one of those ones that tastes phenomenal, but it has the hybrid disease resistance and they are pelleted. And you can see the difference between a pelleted seed and your regular flat, tiny seeds. So I'm gonna have a larger seed to work with in a minute? Yeah, well, I can get these going. Oh, wow, that'd be too easy. Yeah, they're, they're nice. They kind of remind me of uh, yogurt covered raisins. Let me show you guys the difference. Now that is the Ugh. tiny seed there versus the pelleted seed there. So oh my goodness, it's night and day. It's a big difference. It's a big difference. And you will pay a little bit more for that. I will tell you guys this. We'll put a link to Hoss Tools down below. Anything you guys want from there, you know, you can use the link. Also, if you do use our link, we get a small commission and no extra cost to you guys. And it does help our farm out a lot. Also, promo code COGSQUAD23, all this will be down below. We'll give you a free pack of red snapper tomato seeds. What's next? Next is going to be Hossinator, and they're pelleted. Okay. But the uh, the promo code will give you a free pack of red snapper tomato seeds, and your order has to be at least $25, and you can only use it one time until the fall season hits and we change it all up because you're not going to be growing tomatoes in the fall. Well, I guess so. you could if you had I a heated greenhouse. Say, yeah. We might be. If you had a heated greenhouse, you could. Or if you lived in zone 10 or higher, 11. Yeah, don't count these folks out yet, shit. All right, so while you're doing those, I'm going to talk about some things we're growing that we're not starting in trays today. So I am going to start these in trays. It's just going to be a little bit later. And and you could direct seed these too, but I'm going to start these in trays just to give them a, a better head start. We're doing a ton of winter squash this year. Now, a lot of people, I think, get confused about winter squash because they hear the name winter squash, and so they assume you're supposed to plant it in the winter. That's not true. You plant your winter squash in the summer, harvest it right before fall hits, and they save over winter. They store. They're great. I love them because you're talking, gosh, we had Seminole pumpkins that lasted a year. Y'all, I cannot tell you how wonderful it was throughout the winter to go in a area that we had these squash and pumpkins stored mm -hmm. and have the ability to use that in our cooking. The, the flavor was phenomenal. Yeah. They stored so well. Right. And just the, just the freshness of having a fresh garden vegetable in a winter month. They're awesome because you don't have to worry about freeze drying. You don't have to worry about freezers. You don't have to worry. All you have to worry about is have somewhere to put winter squash, which can get, depending on which ones you get, um, you can grow the small wonder and it's small. And so. I just picked a cabinet that wasn't being used. Yeah, that's what and, we did. And used the bottom of it because obviously it's dark mm -hmm. and there was ample space in the cabinet on the bottom shelf and just put them in there with space in between them so they could breathe. And I don't think we ever had one that went bad. I don't think we did either. And we made pumpkin pies, we made pumpkin soups, we made pumpkin canoes, what do they call them, boats? Yeah, boats. butternut squash boats. Um, it was so awesome. And then it, what I did was during some of our rainy weather, I would take some and I would in turn cook them up yeah. and 
you know, make it into puree and freeze it into bags. Uh, but they're just, they're just awesome. And here's the ones I'm going to grow and I'll start these later on because these, the squash are going to go just like that. They're going to germinate super fast. And then the next thing you know, you're going to have squash seed starts covering everything up and they're going to just take over your area. So you want to wait a little bit longer on these guys before you seed start them and these are great to start in the ground too the ones this year we've grown these before is the small wonder spaghetti squash this is a small spaghetti squash so if you're limited to space i even grew this one on a trellis uh the last two years or not last year because we didn't do this last year but year before last and then year prior to that at our little farm these are awesome uh the other one that i'm growing that we have grown before and that is the house butternut squash Again, awesome, awesome winter squash. This is a new one. This is supposed to taste fabulous. And I may do more winter squash, um, but we'll see. But right now, this is what I got here. And this is the Burgess Buttercup Squash. And this one was highly rated for flavor. Uh, some other things that we're going to start later is summer squash. And I got a spineless beauty zucchini. And I got the green zucchini now. We've done the gold zucchini, and it's, I've lost my mind what it's called. But it, it, it was a great... Endless summer, wasn't it? Was that it? Oh, gosh, I can't remember. I wanted you to, to tell the people while you're transitioning from winter squash to summer squash mm -hmm. that summer squash are not to be stored. Right. Summer squash is for the summertime. These guys are super fast. But your summer squash, you're going to pick pretty quick and get a lot of squash at one time and only thing we will do with ours is we'll freeze dry ours but you can freeze them and i've seen people can them too and we we made a relish yeah we a did relish years that's ago. right we made a squash relish that was phenomenal mm -hmm. and used up a lot of squash that way we did and in turn made for a good meal during the off squash season <laughs> yes yeah and i love it on black eyed peas oh yes uh, the Spineless Beauty, Beauty Zucchini, and I went with a green zucchini this year, mainly because if we do resell these things, then the general public here won't get it confused with squash. So if somebody's specifically looking for zucchini, um, you know, there's not that much difference in flavor, really. But if somebody wants zucchini, they want to make zucchini bread, I want people to know they're getting zucchini, and zucchini typically is green. That's why I'm going with a green zucchini, and I'm doing gold prize squash um there's another one i like to, to get they were out and that is gentry squash both of these are awesome to me the only difference between the gentry and the gold prize is, is the gentry's crooked neck the gold prize is straight neck that's basically it but both of them will just produce like crazy so these are be our summer squash and i'll plant these in the seed trays a little bit later because these guys are extremely fast all right here are two things that I'm gonna grow direct seed in the ground. And that is lima beans. I'm gonna grow these directly in the ground uh, just because they do so well that way. And rattlesnake pole beans. Uh, I've had great success with the rattlesnake pole beans. I've never grown this lima bean before. I have done the Christmas lima beans, which did really well. So this is new to us. And I'll plant these guys directly in the ground. Another thing we're growing directly in the ground, and they were out of them, but they said they'll be coming in soon, and they'd send them as soon as they came in, and that is our pink eye purple hull peas. They had several varieties, and I think the top pick was the name of the one that I wanted, and they have a Mississippi one, but they're coming later, and I'll directly sow those in the ground, and it'll be a bunch of those. I'll probably get a pound of those, which is about 1,800 seeds, and I'll use my cedar, my horse cedar, and I'll push it and it'll distribute the seeds out for me. Those are going directly straight in the ground. Now we're gonna continue on as to what we're growing in the seed trays and next up will be uh, okra. We're gonna do jambalaya okra, which is one that we've liked over the years. Um, I may add to it and do some more okra, but right now I'm gonna do jambalaya. Uh, the thing about jambalaya okra is it's a smaller plant the, the uh, Clemson spineless is a real popular plant here, and but it gets so tall, and the pods produce fairly quickly, and you have to go cut them right then. If not, they'll get hard, and you can't eat them. The jambalaya 
kind of gives you a few days there if you're if you're tired um you don't want to go out there and pick that day the jambalaya okra won't get as hard as that clemson spineless will and so it kind of gives you a lead weight and it produces multiple pods at one time uh usually you're usually the okra i've grown in the past you'll get one or two pods a day off that one plant the jambalaya seems to, to produce a lot more and it's a compact plant it's not going to get 10 foot tall as the season progresses very vigorous uh if you like okra the jambalaya i recommend it above all of them is it pelleted no but it's just a big seed okay good yep. so we're going to get started with these do you think you should go ahead and make, a tag, make a tag so we don't get those yep. confused absolutely and how many of these would you like to I plant? plant all of those all of these okay yep. I'm excited to have okra. a long row of okra <laughs> because in the past what's happened to us is we haven't been able to plant enough to have what we call here in the south a mess of okra ready at one time. Yeah, because what happened is is that you go out there and pick it and okra is very small and so you go out to pick it and a plant produces just say on average one to two pods and our other garden was so small I couldn't get but maybe 15 okra plants in, even if 20. And not every plant's gonna produce a pod that day, so. Yeah, it was frustrating. But it was, we'd have to go pick, and it would take us three days to get enough to make enough for us to eat. What we would do would be to add a few pods to peas or yeah. or whatever we were having at the time and enjoy that, that piece instead of it going to waste. Now, these are big seeds. Yeah, they're big seeds, and they're hard seeds. Okra's going to take a little while to germinate. Okay. Um, a lot of people will scratch them with sandpaper. I what? just I just don't do that because the, the shell's so hard on it. Oh, okay. A lot of people will soak them in a mason jar for at least 24 hours to soften up that hard shell. Um, I've had just success just doing it this way. Hey, Holly. Hey, girl. And that is just, just seeding them, just direct seeding them. I think you missed that one. Yeah, I was fixing to say I lost oh. my. I looked down at Holly and I lost my path. So you got what, those? Yes, I have these. All right, so let's do eggplants. Okay. Uh, we did Black Beauty eggplants. And I love that name, Black Beauty eggplant. Red snapper to me is just a hilarious name for a tomato. Well, I was thinking about a snapping turtle as a. We were talking about the red snapper. Well, I kind of like doing this, so if you want to just do all the talking. And oh, I like it. Me do the planting. This helps me out big time. So, left is our peppers this year and cucumbers. Now, the cucumbers in the past that I've grown have been the American pickle, pick, that's hard to say, <laughs> the American pickle, pickling cucumber. I think that's right. Say that again, Dustin. Oh, gosh. That's a really good cucumber. The best cucumber, if you're a market garden and you want something that's gonna produce ooh hoodles of cucumbers, or if you're a canner and you love pickled cucumbers, the Max Pack, hands down, is it. It'll produce more cucumbers than you can shake a stick at, I promise. This year I'm trying something different because this is Hoss's cucumber. This is the Hossinator slicing cucumber. Now, slicing cucumbers, they're, these are great on salads. This is the cucumber that you're going to slice up. You're going to go out there in the garden with your pocket knife, slice it, and eat it while you're picking tomatoes. That's what they're known for. But you can still pickle a slicing cucumber, so don't let that fool you that you can't, you know. And you can slice and eat a pickling cucumber. Just that a slicing cucumber is going to be a little bit more flavorful versus a pickling cucumber. And usually pickling cucumbers are made for pickle jars, so their they're size and all that all that is for pickling but regardless to me a cucumber is a cucumber a cucumber they're very close in flavor to be honest with you she got her something i don't know what it was but she's proud of it <laughs> so <laughs> we're doing the halsinator slicing cucumber this I year i want to know what it was do you i do holly was so proud <laughs> Of a plastic tag. She gets them now. Oh now my she gracious. she got something else now. That's that deer antler. No, it's an egg. Oh. <laughs> it's an egg. Mm. Let's go straight on to our peppers. Okay. I bet they're going to be tiny. You may be surprised. So we're doing two bell peppers this year. 
Uh, I love bell peppers. Love bell peppers. We're doing the Halsinator bell pepper. They got their own pepper this year. So I'm excited about this one. And this one right here, the Chocolate Beauty. It's just beautiful pepper. That's the only reason I got it. Now, are we going to do beautiful. a flat of peppers? Um, it's 30 seeds each. So let's go as far as they'll go? Let's go as far as they'll go. Okay. Which ones do you want to do first? Let's do the Halsinator bell pepper first, and I'll write a tag for it. You know, a, a bell pepper is something that as I got older, yeah, I learned to um, enjoy the flavor of the pepper and not think so much about it being a pepper. Does that make sense? Yeah, I agree. And we use bell peppers a lot. We do. I was just thinking I'll be glad when the day comes that I no longer have to buy. We use bell peppers bell a peppers. lot. Bell peppers. All right, so let's talk about peppers for a second. Peppers are from a hot, hot climate, and they take a long time to germinate. So don't get frustrated with peppers. Um, we may actually even, if I see if there's a cool night whatsoever, bring in my peppers inside the house. Um, we can even wrap them with uh, saran wrap to keep the heat in, and I may do that too. Just be patient because they will come up. If you keep the soil warm, like I got the weed mat here, don't let them dry out and just be patient. Peppers will come up. What are we doing next? We're doing the Gold Rush Banana Pepper. It's Gold Rush Banana Pepper. Banana pepper is something that I love on anything. I can eat banana pepper on a hamburger. Yeah, I've, I've, I've learned to, um, that I have a love for banana peppers as well. Um, banana pepper is one of those things though. They're like Sungo tomatoes. They, they produce gonna, a lot. They gonna keep on keeping on. We I might can keep our pepper sign out by the road for many months. Yes. And so the last pepper we're gonna grow is the Halsinator jalapeno pepper. Hals has really got, they, they've expanded their own line of seeds this year. Jalapenos are just like banana peppers. They're going. <laughs> they're gonna. They're, they're gonna produce. They're gonna produce like crazy. We're gonna finish the row out in these, right? We're gonna finish the row out, and we're done. Well, Jason. We are done. I Doesn't must say, seem... I enjoyed this. Didn't seem like a whole lot, did it? No, it didn't. But you know, if you don't get started, it's gonna seem like a whole lot. Well, it don't seem like a whole lot, but that's 400 plants. That's a whole lot. It is a whole lot. <laughs> That just means you're having fun if it doesn't doesn't feel like a whole lot. That's right. And that's what it's all about. So as we continue on through the growing season here early in this seed starting season, I just say, um, as I start any seeds, I'll let you guys know and we will do a video on it. I'll keep you guys posted on these seeds. And this is my vegetables. Um, this is not the flowers. So we're gonna do flowers. And don't forget, if you're looking at flowers, don't forget the Cog Hill Farm Sunflower Collection at Hoss Tools. Again, links down below, or you can always go to our website. Everything's on our website. All right, so now we gotta cover the seeds up. And you can do this anyway. You can take your leftover seed mix and cover them up. You could take peat moss and cover them up. What I like to do, and it works well for me, and this is what the commercial growers do. This is what Greg at Hoss Tool does. And that is cover it up with perlite. And you can find perlite even at Walmart now. It's crazy how stuff's so readily available now since gardening has gotten so popular. But perlite is just a volcanic rock that kind of helps hold moisture and aerates. So I'm going to sprinkle perlite and cover my seeds up with it and they'll germinate perfectly fine. And perlite also helps with dampening off, which is a fungal disease that your seeds can get, which I've never had, believe it or not. And um, perlite just kind of helps with that as well. So perlite, and it's cheap. Perlite's very inexpensive. It really, really is. And sometimes you can catch it on sale at the end of the season. So wear a mask because it's super dusty and cover it up with perlite. And then I'll come back and just lightly sprinkle it with water and we'll be good to go. All 
I really look like a railroad conductor now, don't I? With my... You do. <laughs> you just need your dog with her red antenna. <laughs> oh, me. But here we go. We got it going. Now, look, I do have this beautiful, awesome grower solutions greenhouse. But you don't have to have a big old fancy greenhouse to start seeds. I did several, several, several videos on how to start seeds in the bedroom, in the bathroom, in your closet, and wherever you want to start them in your house. With simple, cheap LED lights you can get from Walmart. And I'll put some links down below. If not, just, just search it. It should come up. But you don't have to have this fancy greenhouse. But this greenhouse is nice. It's really nice, and I got the room for a greenhouse now. Used to, I didn't have room for anything like this, but um, you don't have to have it to start seeds. All right, I'm super excited, but it's gonna be some work now, I'm gonna tell you. It's gonna be some work. <laughs> but that's all right. That's what I like doing right here now. I think Holly's gonna enjoy it too. Well, when you've been starting seeds all day, it wears you out. 